Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'm going to show you a few customizations that I've done for Fields of Fire, the uh, Solitaire World War II, uh, well, World War II Korea Vietnam game by uh, GMT and designer Ben Hull. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. One ringy dingy. <laughs> So I've finally been able to get into Fields of Fire. This is my third time owning it. I got one time the first edition with the second edition upgrade, and then I got the I got, a, I got another copy and let it go, and then finally got this copy <coughs> on eBay from a uh, seller who uh, misrepresented its condition, said it was lightly used, uh, and by that he just meant that the that uh, two of the uh, terrain decks were not opened yet because <laughs> he didn't really check it out um turns out the box lid was torn um two of the counters had been chewed on like a baby or some kid or dog or cat or something it's not gonna focus here but decided they wanted to chew on the chew on the counter got all messed up so uh this and the other uh one of the one of the player aids they said that they had laminated them but they didn't say that one of them had been had been cut in half but anyway and as usual as i start playing a game i start thinking of like what's not working here what's not good so after um after playing it um if you didn't know or do not know the um uh the game is played on a on a board that's made up of these cards uh terrain cards and you lay them out based on the initial um uh setup of the scenario and then they can expand based on you know enemy uh, enemies making an appearance off to the side, so on and so forth. So, um, but what's, what's can be a pain is you see all these counters here and these counters all are supposed to be on this card, like stacked. And it gets very easy to forget who is what. And, um, you've got these little pinned counters here that, uh, can either apply to a stack, can apply to one unit and there's only so many of them. So I've, I've gotten close to running out, um, of counters before so what i did was and this I, I can't believe this that first of all i haven't been thought of before because this game's been out for for many many years so what i've come up with is these uh uh card sleds location sleds for fields of fire and you can get the the download link will be in um uh, attached on this video so you can get them if you want them i mean you know it's it's it i think it's a great upgrade uh certainly not going to be for everybody. Some people don't have smaller table space and just want the size of the cards. This does effectively double the width of your uh, playing field, which on this scenario is not too bad because it is basically two si <clears throat> about twice the size of, uh, of the card. It doesn't really expand it vertically all that much. Um, you know, maybe a half inch if that. Um, but I think the benefits far outweigh any minor uh, increase in size. Again, unless you you know don't have the table space, and if if so, that's fine. But but essentially, uh, it's it's a very simple thing. And what I did is I took mine and laminated them. I just printed them out, and then and then after I cut them, because you cut them first with hot lamination, because you got that seam on the side, and then I laminated them, and uh, uh, that makes them a little more stiff. You could also just print them on paper. I print them on cardstock first, and then I decided to laminate them. You can print them on paper and then laminate them. Uh, and you could also just print them on uh, paper and glue them to some chipboard and cut them out if you want, just make them a little sturdier. Um, but it just really helps to, uh, it's basically a spot for the card. And then you got these just four regions that you use as you, uh, as you need to for, you know, kind of like sifting through your counters. So um, for instance, this one is, uh, you know, a cover marker and if I can get closer there. So then everything under that cover marker gets a plus one if it's not overcrowded. And so I can put that on this, this of the four slots. I can use one of those slots to say this is part of that cover and anything on this one is under that cover. Instead of having a stack of counters under that cover and then I've got to go rifling through these counters on these cards, which if you sleeve them become kind of slick anyway. And then things that affect the whole card can stay on the card, like the volume of fire coming in, mines on the card, um, I've got a trench here that's nobody's occupied for some reason. I haven't moved anybody into that trench yet, uh, but it was there from, from a previous uh, enemy. 
So things like that, um, uh, just it gets a lot clearer on how to see it. Now, some people like the chaos of having all those counters on the cards and rifling through them every turn, but this is a very procedural game. You, you kind of do the same thing every turn. You take your actions, those are going to vary, but then the, the process, the steps, is very orderly. And it's really a great game. Once, I'm, I'm glad I finally committed to, to trying to play it. So that's really good. So anyway, if you want these, the link will be in there. You can download them. Program. I did 20. I did five sheets of cardstock, and, and that makes this four to a page. Cut them out, laminated them, and now I've got 20 of these. Um, they're not all in play, obviously. I've got a few extras here, and I'll make more if I need to. Uh, then the other thing I did, and this is e this is very easy to do, is then I cut some foam core, some scrap foam core that I had, and some scrap corrugated cardboard that I had, just you know, off a shipping box. But I had some extra just sitting there, and so I cut them to be uh, the same size as the cards. Uh, so they're uh, four by five and a quarter. So those are there. And then what you can do with those is like here, um, see if you can see a good one here. Let's see if I can turn this a little bit. So like here, where you've got the uh, hill, you can just set the card up on some cardstock. I mean, not on cardstock, on one of these lifters. And now your whole hill is actually physically on your board elevated above so now you can get a better feel like this guy can see over these guys into this card so on and so forth and then these two are hills side by side so while the hill card is there still to show that it exists this gives it a visual lift and it actually it was very revealing as i was setting these back up because i had started out playing the game just you know with the cards before i realized that i wanted to do this and uh just physically lifting the the uh, sled up off the ground just made it a world of difference for for that um for actually being able to visualize the height and stuff like that so if you ended up with like multiple hill cards i mean you can end up with a big stack and you kind of can feel now like oh he can see this and this and this so it's very helpful anyway um that link will be there and then the other thing is just something i've shown uh many times before and other things but i'll just show here because i've done these now i've done these three times i did it with the second time i got uh, fields of fire and then somebody actually hired me to make the set do not ask i'm not doing it again um for fields of fire so i made the exact same set and then i made them for myself for this this go around because i was gonna i was committed to play it but that's basically my uh, modular uh, gmt compatible storage trays so this is one i've got here for the uh, u.s communications i made a little you know lids for them in the the color coordinated the lids um, but then these are available on my Etsy shop and I'll have a link in the, uh, in the article as well. And you hold them on with a rubber band, but then, so you go on here for the American forces and keeps things really neat and orderly and you can find things when you need them. Um, I've got two here for the game markers that you'll, that you'll need throughout the game. They can just set off the side like that. And then these dividers were available on Board Game Gulag for uh, for somebody else that were manual print and cut or manual uh, you know print them out, cut them out, fold them yourself. And I made these for uh, my uh, paper cutter, and I, I I print them out just as I need them. But you can get the you can get the ones uh, you know that you just you know print out and and score them and cut them yourself too. Um, and then of course we got the Germans separated so the germans are in their own little force box and that's what i call them as force boxes i've used them for combat commander i've used them for many 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 games and it works really great for keeping the counters organized um because you only need the size that you need you don't have to devote a full gmt tray and have them subdivided and then when you're playing the game you have to have out, have out all these uh, large trays to get everything neat and orderly so then we also have over here, uh, I showed you everything, but so here's the uh, the uh, North Korean, North Vietnamese Viet Cong forces, right? And they're sealed because I don't need them for the uh, Normandy campaign, obviously, but they're all in here and they're sorted. So this is, this is the same size as a, uh, this holds the same amount as a GMT tray. It's just a lot thinner and a lot more, uh, it's thinner uh, height, length, width, height. I mean, it's just a smaller box. So, um, 
It does not fit in the box. The box is, I wish they had a three inch fields of fire box. That would be awesome. And it would, uh, it would hold everything without lifting the box lid. But uh, still, it's, uh, it's still nice to, to be organized. And it, it, it does fit better than the two or three GMT trays that you would need to accommodate these. So anyway, um, just wanted to share that. I know this probably went a little longer than I thought. But uh, so you get the you can download the train cards if you want them for free off the uh, they'll be on my blog and I'll provide a link to that. And then the modular trays, I'll have a link to the Etsy shop. And that's basically you buy them once and, uh, you know, you own the pattern and you can print them. And there's lids for all the I think there's uh, five different sizes uh, you can so you can print a a one module, a two module. You can build a one module, two module, three module or four module and you can print a lid for each of those. And then this is a special um, two by six, or two, two by three, holds six. Cause I didn't want to have to devote a 10, you know, two module one to this if I didn't need to, when I only need six. So anyway, uh, that is that. And I hope it helps you as you're playing Fields of Fire from GMT Games. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh.